the Sugar Boys had a historic achievement recently as they went off to the United States and played a couple of matches. Jamir Claxton went along with them. First of all, he's going to tell us um, what his um, responsibilities were and what was the significance of that very important tournament over in the USA. Jamir. Okay, thank you, Curtis. Um, first of all, I, I was a team's manager and my responsibilities included but not limited to um, coordinating uh, flight arrangements, um, hotel rooms, um, submitting all documents on behalf of the SKNFA in relation to the competition, um, the squad, meal times, training times, um, communicating with CONCACAF in terms of media obligations and so forth. So there were a lot of administrative stuff that I took responsibility for, for, responsibility for as the team manager. Um, in terms of what we would have achieved, it was historic because it was the first time we've gone to that stage. Uh, we've been knocking on the door for a number of years, and so to finally break through was a great feeling. And I know the country has been proud, and now it's just up to us to go ahead and build on that in the future. And that was the CONCACAF um, tournament. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the CONCACAF Gold Cup is the region's top international tournament. It's similar to the Copa America for South America and the Euros for Europe. So it's a top tournament within the region that is contested by the, uh, by the region's top teams. Um, only 16 spots are available. So for us, um, one of 41 members to get one of those 16 spots is a significant achievement. Some of the teams that you beat getting into this historic um, semis or whatever it was, um, tell us some of the teams that you beat. Okay, so we originally qualified um, from our group, um, nations from the Nations League competition, which is CONCACAF's qualifier for the Gold Cup. So we topped that group, which featured um, French St. Martin and Aruba. Um, that put us in the preliminary round, and we came up against Curacao, in the first game, QSO is one of the best teams in the region. So going into that game, we were the underdogs. Uh, most persons expected them to go through because of their pedigree and the level of players they have. But I think we performed tremendously and we got the upset. And then in the second round of the preliminaries, we faced uh, French Guyana, which is another one of the region's top teams. And again, we were victorious and that put us, in, put us into the group stage for the first time in our history. So we had to get a we had to get past two very good teams to create history. And having created history, do you think that the team kind of froze, realizing it was like, hey, you know what we have achieved? This is historic. But hey, we have some giants now to face. Did, did they freeze when they got there? I wouldn't say they, they froze when they got there. Um, the teams that we came up against were Again, three teams that were regulars at the competition. Um, if you look at all three teams in our group, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and USA, they've all, all been to a World Cup. And you know, the World Cup is the top um, competition in terms of football. Uh, what I think is, you know, we're uh, sort of inexperienced because it's our first time at that level. And so there are certain things that we had, that we come up against players who played in the highest leagues around the world, the Bundesliga, the Premier League, MLS. And you know, we have players who are amateurs. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Malik Roberts from Keon works at Marriott. And in the game against Jamaica, he was facing the Mary Gray, who plays for Everton in the English Premier League. So if you can see the contrast in terms of where the players are. But I think for a first time, even though the results didn't go away, it was a very good learning experience. There's a lot that we learned from technical standpoint, medical standpoint, and administrative standpoint, which is going to help us when we get there again. I also want to point out that we, are, we had a couple of other Nivijans who played significant roles, whether administratively or otherwise, on this tour. Could you just mention those other guys? Yeah, so we had, like myself, we had other Nivijans a part of the contingent. Um, Macefield Nisbet, you probably know him as Jam. He is the team's trainer. Um, Duana Pemberton Jeffers, um, the team doctor, and Leroy Junjun Sweeney, the team's equipment manager. All of us played a significant role in helping the team get from the early stage to the Gold Cup. So, having lost in the 
matches in the USA. What's in it now? What is the SK and Sugar Boys planning? Well, as we go forward, having learned from the experience, what's up? As I mentioned earlier, we, we learned a lot from the experiences. And so we have a general idea what it takes to compete at that level now. Uh, one of the most important lessons that we learn is that at that level, the, um, so it is very important to pay attention to details in all aspects of the team. Um, it is very important to get the right personnel, whether um, administrative, technical, even players, you need the right personnel for you to be successful. But most importantly, what we learn is that opportunities like this don't come along very often, especially for small nations like us. So we embraced it and it has given us the motivation to ensure that we are there next time around and also maybe consistently in the future. I think we have inspired um, a generation of young players coming up that it is possible for a small country like ours to play with the big boys. And so we are hoping that they in turn will now take our experience and use it as motivation to ensure that St. Kitts and is a consistent participant at the Gold Cup. And finally, Jamia, of course, they had a warm welcome home. I think the nation was proud of the achievement. What do you think about the reception you got when you returned? Yeah, it was a very good reception. Uh, it showed that despite the results in the latter stages, um, the country as a whole was proud of our accomplishment. Um, even when we were in the U.S., when we first qualified, we were getting a lot of well mes messages from well-wishers, both at home and in diaspora. Um, also, as I mentioned, when we got back home, we got a very good welcome. Even when we got back to Nevis, the, the contingent when we got back to Nevis, we were greeted. It wasn't planned, but as we exited the ferry, you know, persons were congratulating us. We drove to town. I remember getting to town and I needed to get something to eat and I went to a restaurant and I was able to get a free drink. <laughs> the person was like, you know, this is all I could do for you, but I'm very proud of what you and the country would have achieved. So the welcome back home has been very positive. It's been very encouraging. Um, and I said, it has now motivated us to do better next time. Thank you very much, Jamir. And we continue to be proud of our ambassadors and we look forward to the day when Jamaica will be beaten Trinidad and Tobago will be beaten, and of course the USA. You dream of that too? Yes, yes I do. And I know it is possible because even with our limited resources and like limited pool of talent, I think that we can compete with the best with the right mechanisms in place. Thank you very much, Jamir.